Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, first off, I would like to thank those who participated in our survey yesterday for the top five uh, stock requests that you'd like me to uh, to analyze. So yesterday, many of you voted for SM, SMC, MBT, ISM, Pure Gold, PX, PXP, JFC, BPI, BDO, MPI, all the way to nickel. But for the top five, top five stock requests that got the highest number of votes, we have SM, SMC, MBT, ISM, and Pure Gold. So we're going to discuss, I'm going to talk about those five stocks today. And I am using First Metro Securities, uh, First MetroSec Pro. Okay, so as you can see on this uh, link right here, you can see that. It's First MetroSec Pro. Um, I, I like this chart. I like this charting tool because uh, it's it's more flexible than the other uh, charting tools of other brokers. And uh, here, first let, let's talk about SM, okay? So I did not add the usual stochastic uh, chart at the bottom because I, I think it's it clogs the it clogs the view. So for us to be able to move around with uh, with not not so many things going on on our screen i removed stochastic anyway we, we already have macd rsi the net foreign fund the net foreign flow and then we have the volume chart and then we have the the candlestick uh, on top so for sm i have already plotted the support and resistance levels of this stock for the new investors who have been trying to plot their own support and resistance levels one of the frequently asked questions that I get is, is like this, Sir, bakit hindi tayo pareho ng naipaplat na support and resistance levels? Either mababa ng kaunti yung sa akin, mataas ng kaunti yung sa inyo, or vice versa. Okay, folks, here's the thing. Whenever you plot support and resistance levels, hindi ito passing ka precise. No? Hindi precise points yung kinukuha natin dito. We're looking at ranges. We're just trying to plot the ranges, no? support and resistance range. Hindi yung 101.39, hindi siya ganun. No? That's not the goal. So, I just want to clarify that for, for, for those who, who have been sending me emails or inquiries on Facebook na paano daw mag-plot mag ng support and resistance levels. The goal is to just to get the range. No? Hindi yung absolute value, hindi yung precise point na precise all the up until the ano centavo level no? hindi ganun yung goal so for example if i got eight eight hundred thirty seven pesos and 40 centavos for the major support dito for sm and nakuha mo is 837 pesos without the 40 centavos it's okay range lang, man, lang naman ang kinukuha natin now going back to sm uh i see the major i see the major support here at 8, 837.40 with the immediate resistance level at 993 pesos. Okay. Now, should should uh, this ascent continue? We're looking at, should this ascent continue and break above the resistance point at 993 pesos? Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, resistance level is pegged at 1,142 pesos. So, medyo malayo yung gap niya doon. Marami-rami siyang kailangang i-break. So, with that said, SM needs needs a continuation ng bullish volume. No? So, ang, ang ina-expect natin dito is kada sana taas ng presyo niya, sana it's supported by volume. And preferably sana yung volume na yun is always above its 30-day volume average. 30-day no? volume average. Now, yun dun sa 30-day volume average na yun, that's the kind of chart na pinipresent ko sa mga Equifix subscribers. No? I can show them Yung volume ba today is above or below the 30-day volume average? Bakit? Ano bang kinalaman yung position ng, ng, position ng price point doon in relation doon sa position ng volume average? For me, if the stock closed in green, bullish yung nag-close, no? nag-register siya ng green candlestick, 
kung green ang closing na candlestick niya, tapos yung uh, volume niya today is above the 30-day volume average, my my uh, historical data and backtest show na mataas ang probability na may continuation yung ascent ng stock na yon. Pero kung nag-close nga siya in green, pero below the 30-day volume average yung kanyang volume for, to, for today, there's a chance na parang ano lang, magsa-sideways pa rin yung ano, walang, hindi ganun kataas yung conviction ko to, to forecast na, ah, ito magko-continue. O pwedeng mag, magpa-fluctuate lang siya, magsa-sideways, magko-continue lang siya mag-sideways movement, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, ulit, down. Okay, ganun, ganun siya. Again, also kapag naman nag-close siya in green, tapos yung volume mo, ay nag-close siya in red, no? red yung candlestick for today, and then your, your volume average is uh, above your, your volume for today is above your 30-day volume average, then there's a chance na mataas ang probability na mag-continue yung descent pagbaba. No? So that's how I correlate yung price at yung volume, yung registration ng volume, no? vis-a-vis -vis with the 30-day uh, volume average ng stock. No? So again, pakita ko lang sa inyo. Let's zoom out itong stock na SM. Kapag nag-break below, let's say nagbago yung ihip ng hangin and the SM investors would want to realize the, realize their profits, kung bumaba yan 837.40 pesos uh, centavos, no? that's uh, the, the, the precursor to the next uh, support level na nasa 601. Malalim-lalim na siya. 601, that's the major. Of course, kailangan mo muna mag-break itong in-between. No? Nasa 705, no? 772, yan. Mga minor support level yun. Now, if mabreak niya itong uh, 993, which is the precursor to the next resistance level na nasa 1,142, yun nga, kanina sabi ko, it needs uh, support no? coming from the volume. No? Habang umaangat, sana yung stock price, sana yung volume na nagre-register is above its 30-day volume average. No? That's what we prefer. No? But, at the end of the day, we cannot dictate what, where the market wants to go. Kailangan flexible tayo. No? Gaano man kabulish or kabearish ang forecast natin. If the market decides to act as a contrarian doon sa bearishness or bullishness ng forecast natin, we should be fast enough to adjust and execute the, the plan B. No? Kailangan lagi, lagi tayong ganun. No? Now, I'm going to show you as well the net foreign. No? Ito bang pag-ascend ng price ni SM, no? From here, no? tumatak siya ng nasa 850, no? Kailan? Noong October, no? Second week of October. From 850, it went up all the way to uh, 980, no? Uh, first week of December. So, sa net foreign niya dito nakikita natin, there's a mixed, mixed sentiment but if you're going to count the number of uh, net foreign bars pointing to the south, mas marami sila. Zoom out pa natin ang chart. Mas marami pa rin sila. So, dominante. We can see that uh, the outflow of foreign funds is more dominant. Is do more dominant than the inflow. No? Pagpasok ng foreign fund mga foreign investments sa SM. Now, who's moving the stock upward? Retail investors, we can say. Pero gladly, no? uh, on the good side of it, numipis, numipis yung outflow of foreign funds compared naman dito sa mula nung January 2018 until ano, no? until uh, the first one the first two quarters of 2018 no? mas numipis yung outflow of foreign funds sa last half of 2018 when compared to the first half of the la of last year mas numipis so big sabihin doon mas uh, uh, na ano na na pumepreno na sa pag pag vo pag vo vomit ng foreign fund yung mga foreign investors ni SM so that's good news for long-term investors of SM. Kung meron man sa inyo dyan. Now for MACD, no? 
MACD I'm going to relate the position of uh, SM's MACD with the 10 SMA no? I'm using uh, 10 SMA I know for most of you you're using the 20 50 and 100 patterns I'm using the 10 20 10 50 and 200 no? so in 20 ninyo 10 sa akin why gusto ko mauna mauna eh. mas mauna ang pumasok no kaysa doon sa bago for some of you na hinihintay na mag-hit yung price no mag mag-inch closer or mag uh, cross above that the position of the 10 SM at 20 SMA mas mauuna ako kung 10 SMA yung sa akin no uh, I have an article I published it maybe 4 years ago or so on my personal website jcdeguzman.com and I also teach this uh, uh, combination with my Equipix subscribers that if if the closing price touches no or it closes above the 10 simple moving average and then yung MACD mo nag cross na rin above the signal line so for the newbie eto sa MACD line na to eto yung blue that's the MACD line the red yung red na to that's the signal line kapag yung blue pa cross over na or nag cross above na sa, sa signal line Tingnan mo ngayon yung position ng stock. Yung last candlestick ba ay above? No? Above ba siya sa green line which is my 10 SMA? Kung green line na yan, that's a, signal, that's a buy signal for me. No? Uh, that's a buy signal. Ibig bang sabihin yan, lahat na lang ng stock na ang price, ang closing price ay nag-cross above the 10 SMA at ang MACD ay nag-cross above the signal line. Lahat na lang ba bibilin ko? Ay hindi naman ganun. I will have to take a look at the liquidity of the stock. May volume ba yan? No? May volume ba yan? Kasi kung, kung magta-trade ako ng let's say 5 million pesos worth of shares, no? tapos nagta-trade lang ang stock, 1.5 million, 1 to 1.5 million a day. So, ma ma ano yan, mahirap i-trade yan. No? Mahirap mag-exit. No? Madaling bumili. Kung maraming gusto magbenta, pero by the time na magbebenta ako, Kung nag-re-range lang between 1 to 1.5 million a day yung stock na to, kunyari, yung stock na to, and then magbebenta ako ng 5 million worth of shares, ako rin ang sasalo doon sa pagbaba ng presyo nun because of uh, significant selling. So, liquidity rin. Tingnan din ninyo. No? Liquid ba yung stock? No? For the newbie, ibig sabihin ng liquid, relatively speaking, mataas ba yung volume niyan? No? Mal malaki yung volume din ba? ang nare-register niya on a daily basis. Kasi kung mali maliit na volume lang, relatively maliliit na volume lang, mahirap umexit, mahirap mag-realize ng profit. No? So, ayan. So, for SM, it's already above the 10 SMA. And then, the MACD is about to register. I think, wala. Hindi malinaw yung bullish, uh, bullish divergence between MACD and signal line. But, uh, if you'd like to be an early... Uh, if you would like to preempt preempt the signal, you can do a test buy. Siguro, test buy lang. Never go all in. No? Never go all in on any stock. Kahit pa gaano kaklaro yung inyong buy signal. Kahit pa, gaan, kahit pa bullish lahat ng mga indicators na nasa screen ninyo. Never go all in. No? Uh, buy in trenches. Hindi man umayon sa ultra bullish sentiment niyo ang ang market o yung stock specifically at least you don't get wiped out of the game too early no may pangsalo kayo may matitirang pangsalo no or hindi niyo ipapatalo lahat ng pera ninyo okay never go all in so that's it for SM no for RSI it's, it's still within the range na it's neither oversold nor overbought no Okay, just in case, no? Ito lang, pa pahabol ko lang. Just in case si RSI, lumampas siya dito sa 80. By classical definition, that's that means the stock is oversold, no? Huwag, <coughs> excuse me. Huwag kayong dedepende doon sa classic, classical interpretation ng mga indicators. No? Kung overbought yan, let's say nag-81. Technically speaking, that's inside the overbought territory. No? Kung nag-81 yan, ibig bang sabihin na magbebenta ka na? I don't. Hindi, hindi ako hindi ako naka-base sa textbook definition ng mga tools. No? That's another reason bakit gumawa ako ng sarili kong proprietary tools at Equilist. No? Um, I don't rely on 
I, I siguro yung reliance ko on classical tools that were invented even before I was born. Siguro mga nasa 10 15 to 10 to 15 percent. Majority of the tools that I use are tools that I created on my own. No? So ito. Uh, kapag nag-81 'yan, ano yung mga pwede mong tingnan? No? Tingnan mo muna kung una yung yung net foreign not net foreign fund flow ba ay bullish. Kahit na para sa akin ha, kahit na nasa overbought territory, nasa RSI, yung RSI mo nasa overbought territory na. Kung masigasig ang foreign investors sa pagbibili, sa pagbili ng shares ng stock na yon. That's one point. That's already one point uh, na pwedeng pumigil sa akin na magbenta muna. I-hold yung idea na ah, benta, magbebenta, magbebenta na ako dapat nito. Pumasok na sa overbought territory ang RSI. That's one point na pwedeng pumigil sa decision na yon. Another thing, yung volume. Kung umaarangkada yung presyo tapos umaarangkada din naman, no? Parang hagdan na paakyat din yung registration ng volumes uh, uh, volume bars, no? Ibig sabihin noon, gusto pa ng mga tao. No? Gusto pa ng mga tao yung stock, no? Sakyan niyo yung momentum. Ang ang tinutulo ko sa mga Equilist subscribers is gumamit kayo ng trailing stop loss, no? May article ako dyan sa website whether sa jcdeguzman.com or sa equilist.com, but I suggest yung nasa equilist.com na lang. I-search nyo siya. Trailing stop loss. May article kayo mababasa doon. Marami yun. No? Trailing stop loss, kasi the concept of using a trailing stop loss is that umaangat yung inyong trailing stop loss every time na nag-register, na, um, every time na umaangat ang presyo ng stock. Kaya kagaya ng turo ko sa mga clients, a trailing stop loss does three Tatlo, three piece, letter piece. Una, it preserves your capital, it protects your gain, and it preserves, uh, no, it uh, prevents unbearable losses. No? Again, letter P, it protects your gains, it preserves your capital, and it prevents unbearable losses. No? So, yun ang trailing stop loss ang gamitin nyo bilang inyong selling price. No? Guide lang itong mga pinagguguhit kung ano. Uh, support and resistance levels, no? Kahit pa yung stock ay pauntog na siya sa support level na pinakamalapit sa kanya, no? Kung yung trail kung yung price naman is above your trailing stop loss, hold lang. It's either you hold your position or you buy some more in tranches. Again, ha, wag all in na naman. No? Hold or buy in tranches. Depende doon sa uh, personal ninyong financial goal, investment horizon, at saka risk tolerance. No? So, ganun ang katuruan sa Equilist Analytics. No? Hindi siya spoon feeding na ultimo yung tanong kung ikiklik ba yung left 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 button ng mouse or right button ng mouse ikiklik na ba. Ah, hindi ganun. We we ano, we we advocate here yung ability to rationalize, no? I explain ko like this. Actually, mas madetalyado pa nga kung nasa private clients forum because I'm going to show you the price volume distribution chart tsaka yung top 10 player sentiments, no? Pero with this, I think, dito pa lang sa the way I explain this, you can already, already form a, uh, a go or no go decision kung bibili ba kayo, mag i ba kayo sa KSM o hindi. No? Mas detalyado nga lang for the clients, for, no? for the subscribers. No? So, yun. Trailing stop loss. Gumamit kayo yung trailing stop loss. Huwag kayong dumepende sa classical interpretation ng Uy, RSI, overbought, benta na eh. Uy, stochastic, overbought, overbought, overbought din siya. Dalawa na silang overbought, benta na tayo. Hindi. Use a trailing stop loss. And, and when you do that, walang pa-stress. Stress ang, you will realize, hindi naman dapat ganun ka-stressful ang, ang uh, investing, even trading. Okay, that's for SM. Let's move on to SMC. For SMC, wow, nakita nyo yung ano, ladderized down uh, southward direction ng pagbaba ng price. No? Mini-mirror siya ng foreign, foreign investors. No? Nagbo-vomit din sila ng funds nila. No? And kahit na hindi nyo nakikita yung aking uh, uh, volume chart showing that kung ang volume ba ay above or below the 30 volume average by just merely looking at this uh, volume chart, you can say na above the 30-day volume average na itong pinakahuli. At least yung most recent na bar, volume bar na, na i-register kahapon. 
above na yan sa 30-day volume average ni SMC. At yung price niya, red din siya. So, following my interpretation, uh, uh, pagdating sa volume at price, no? mataas ang probability na mag-continue ang descent ng price ni SMC. No? Sinesecond the motion pa yan ng foreign investor sentiment. Pababa din yan. No? And then for your MACD, obviously, meron tayong uh, bearish convergence. No? Umaayon yung signal line tsaka, signal line tsaka MACD na mag-move sila congruently. Pababa. No? Pointing, pointing downward. Southeast direction. And then for your RSI, oh, classical interpretation, no? Nasa oversold territory na. Yung iba, ang in, uh, iba sa inyo ini-interpret to, no? Yung iba sa inyo ini-interpret ito na na pag pumasok siya ng oversold territory, oh, bili na tayo. Murang-mura na ang stock, no? Tingnan niyo muna, nag nagsis na ba o humina na ba kahit papaano man lang, no? Yung foreign, yung gana ng mga foreign fund flow na magsipagbenta ng shares nila for that stock. Lumipis ba? O, kanina, pinakita ko sa inyo, mula dito, mula noong uh, December 5 up until December 14. No? Talaga makapal yung uh, makapal yung uh, uh, outflow of foreign funds. No? Ngayon, pumasok ulit yung RSI ni SMC within the uh, normal level. No? Neither overbought nor oversold. Humina ba ang foreign fund, out, outflow of foreign funds? Well, kahit pa paano, humina naman siya, of course, Rel relative dun sa uh, pinakita niya noong December 2018. But still, kahit zoom out natin to, wala akong nakikita ang uh, net foreign buying na na bar. No? Pero at least humina siya. No? Nagsa-sideways movement na lang siya ngayon. It's, it, uh, uh, for SMC, SMC holders, matuwa kayo because uh, it treated the SMC treated 142 pesos 0.20 sabi na lang natin as a support level no hindi siya bumaba pa doon all the way sa hindi siya basta bumaba ng 142.22 no nag-hold siya above that ngayon position niya uh MACD is above the signal line no? above the signal line although both are below the zero line no? how about the price okay the price is above the 10 SMA. Is this a signal, buy signal to? Kung sa totoo sen, no? if we're going to uh, interpret my 10 SMA MACD combination, it's a buy signal. No? However, gaano baka, base sa mga itinuro ko sa inyo, magmula kay SM hanggang dito, gaano baka taas yung, yung, yung bullish sentiment na pwedeng i-derive dito sa buy signal na to? Una, titignan natin. Medyo, wala pa rin nire-register na uh, inflow of foreign fund among foreign investors. Pangalawa, yung volume na na-register since the last trading days of the year up until this week, hindi ganun katatangkad yung mga volume bars compared to the uh, volume bars noong earlier weeks of December last year. No? So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyong ano, exercise of rationality. Hindi tayo pwedeng parang robot na lang na uh, Uy, yung combination ko, buy signal, bili na. No, hindi ko pwede. You need to exercise your rationality. Titinan mo yung mga nasa paligid ng ano. Gano'n ba kataas yung conviction ko na bumili nga? Nasundin itong buy signal na to. Gano'n kataas yung conviction ko na itong sell signal na to ay talagang kailangan magbebenta na talaga ako. No? So, yun yung rationality na sinasabi ko. And minsan, yung rationality na yun nakadepende rin sa personal mong investment horizon at risk tolerance, no? If I can stomach 20% na risk, maybe some of you, no, up until 5% or maybe 25%, mas, mas mataas. No? So, now, when it comes to selling, again, ang basihan ko lang dyan, for me not to have a stress, para hindi masyadong ma-stress when it comes to making a selling decision, yung trailing stop loss lang talaga. No? Trailing stop loss lang talaga. Okay. So, for the resistance, nasa 1.5. 155.30 no? it's a precursor once it's broken it's a precursor to the next resistance level na nasa 
seven at least, one sixty six point nine. So, pag bumaba pa yan, let's say, uh, here's the ano, if, if you have been trading for a while, mapapansin nyo yung behavior ng mga stocks. Uh, kapag nag-hold sila on a certain support level, magsa-sideways yan. No? Yung, mga traders, yung, yung mga traders na nag-hold pa sa stock na yon, pag nagsawa yan, sa kaka-hold, and natagalan sila, natagalan sila sa uh, bound, rebound ng stock no? by a significant degree, magsisipagbentahan yan. So, monitor that, no? monitor that as well especially yung volume no uh, kapag ganyan kanipis ang volume relative doon sa previous uh, volume niya sa nakaraang mga linggo weeks tapos pa sideways movement lang ang stock no tignan niyo yung sustainability ng ng movement ng stock na yon no kapag ka kasi walang support coming from the volume it's either tatagal yan ng magsa sideways movement lang consolidation no or kapag nainip ang mga traders niyan mag-exit. So, if you are into short-term trading, uh, I recommend kailangan kung may full-time job kayo, akma doon sa trading hours ng, ng uh, PSE. Uh, also, I do not advocate stealing your, stealing company's hours. No? Silip-silip, panayam break, just to check kung uh, kamusta na yung mga tinitrade yung stocks actively. If if hindi sumasang ayon yung schedule nyo sa trabaho ninyo, full-time job, tsaka yung time zone, especially kung nasa ibang bansa kayo, I would suggest, ano na muna? Mag-long-term investing na muna kayo. No? Um, even kung ilalagay ko man din ang sarili nyo, sarili ko sa sarili ninyo, let's say, let's say, nasa ibang bansa ako, nagtatrabaho ko, I don't own the company, kunyari, I, I work for someone else. Um, very tempting yung gagamit ako ng company hours no panayam break si silip silip wala na akong magagawang trabaho for the company na pinagtatrabahuhan ko no? i i don't advocate that so anyway that's my take so that's for SMC okay so what's the next stock that we need to discuss now let's talk about Metro Bank MBT okay for MBT Okay, its price is moving above the 10 simple moving average and then MACD is about is poised to register a crossover above the signal line although both lines are still below the zero line. Now, for the RSI, uh, the RSI of MBT went back to the uh, normal range. It's neither overbought nor oversold but it's, more, but it's much closer to the overbought territory. Nonetheless, that's the classical interpretation of RSI. Now let's take a look at the net foreign fund. Um, I mean, I'm seeing some good, uh, some good stances coming from the some good stance coming from the foreign investors. So beginning, beginning in the last trading days of November last year, we have started to read, to see some um, foreign buying from the um, foreign fundies, of course. Um, there were some there were some days that MBT that foreign investors registered a net foreign but net foreign selling day, but those are minimal, um, considerably insignificant com compared to the uh, size of the net foreign buying that they have registered in the last month last month of the year. Now, when it comes to when it comes to volume, um, I would say that. Uh, the volume that MBT investors have registered for the past 30 days, at were maybe 15, 15 trading days at least, um, is still below the 30-day volume average. Nonetheless, the price uh, has consistently uh, moved move up above the 10-day simple moving average. And the, on the good side of it, especially for the long-term investors of MBT, um, the closing price of MBT is above its 200-day simple moving moving averages. If you're going to Google what's the 200 SMA is for, you would see that most uh, most uh, chartists or analysts would say that if and when the price is moving above the 200-day simple moving averages, then that means the stock is bullish at least on the long term or long term uh, horizon or long term perspective. So these are the things that uh, you need to know about MBT. Uh, the next, uh, the resistance level that you would wish to to be broken 
in the in, in the future is the is 85.94 okay now if you're going to plot the next support resistance level after 85.94 it would be somewhere around 96.55 okay so it should be somewhere somewhere near that uh, price point okay so it's still above the 10 SMA and MACD is about to, to cross above the signal line if you if you would like to preempt this uh, the confirmation of a bullish signal of a buy signal coming from my 10 SMA and MACD combination you can do so but nonetheless my recommendation is just you do it uh, you buy in tranches never go all in when it comes to determining your selling price, use a trailing stop loss. Uh, if you are an Equi, Equipix subscriber, so Equilist Analytics Incorporated, I would suggest you take a look at the uh, maglagin kayo sa private clients forum or maglagin kayo sa account niyo. If this stock, if nakikita niyo yung stock code na MBT doon sa either sa short-term trading or long-term investing watch list, may table doon eh, mga stock recommendations ko for short term trading long term investing. Kung nakikita niyo si MBT doon, no? Minenshon ko doon yung mga price points na pwede niyo gamitin candidates sa pagbenta, sa pagbili, pagbili ng stock. Pagbili lang. Bakit walang candidates for pagbebenta? Kasi nga trailing stop loss lang. No? Trailing stop loss nga yung pinaka selling point natin. At least that's what I teach my clients, no? yung mga price candidates for buying candidates na para maging buy candidates for buying points naka-mention sila doon sa uh, doon sa dalawang table of stock recommendations no? ngayon kung si MBT wala siya it's neither present nor available doon sa dalawang watch list na yon go to the private clients forum tingnan niyo baka mayroong nang nagtanong o nag-request ng ng top 10 player sentiment or price volume distribution chart ni MBT no mini-mention ko doon kung Ano yung, ano, ano yung mga price points na kailangan yung bantayan? Saan kayo po position if you would like to enter a new position or if you would like to top up? Ibig sabihin nung bibili pa kayo ng karagdagang shares ni MBT ninyo. No? So, that's the, that's the kind of data na hindi ko pinipresent dito sa mga uh, freemium stock. No? Sa mga libre pero uh, magagamit ninyo. I hope magagamit ninyo. No? Itong mga pinapublish natin for free. So, that's for MBT. Now, let's go to the next stock, which is ISM. Kanina, mayroon akong interesting thing na nakita kay ISM as far as foreign fund flow is concerned. Ano? Hindi ito foreign investors' favorite. Nakikita naman ninyo, no? flat line siya dito. Starting noon na uh, before, sa first, magmula sa, ano, basta, First half of the year, 2018, flatline. Almost walang nangyari, walang ginawa ang mga foreign investors. Nabu nabuhayan lang, no? Nashaken yung mga foreign investors dito. No? Nag-buy and sell sila kay ISM uh, by a significant degree relative dun sa relative dun sa absence naman ng presence nila, ng mga nagdaang mga uh, quarters no? dito. Ito yung kasagsagan ng November ito eh. Kasagsagan ito ng mga balita about sa third telco. Ano? Ayan. Sa pagbentahan, bumili sila. Ano? Ngayon, paunti-unti na nilang binovomit. Little by little. Pero still, yung mga bin bin pinag uh, pinagbibili nila, kung susumain natin magmula noong uh, last trading days ng October last year, ano? Uh, most probably, malapit-lapit na sila sa zero. Malapit na sila. Malapit na nilang mailabas lahat ng mga uh, binili nila. No? Magbabak sila. Sa, babalik sila sa dating stance nila kay ISM. But, go, moving out of the perspective of the, ano, going out of the perspective of the foreign investors, tingnan naman natin yung iba nating indicators. At the moment, ISM is moving above the 10 days uh, simple moving average. Uh, nonetheless, it's still inside the bullish territory as far as uh, long-term investment horizon is concerned. Uh, in connection to its position above the 200-day simple moving average, itong blue line na to. No? And then for MACD, let's zoom out the chart. For MACD, we can see here that um, slightly, no? MACD already crossed above the signal line. 
Nonetheless, RSI is still moving within the neutral territory. It's neither overbought nor oversold. Now, when it comes to volume, um, ISM has been moving uh, in a sideways pattern. I think I would correlate that with the with the uh, very flimsy, no? very flimsy uh, volume that uh, it registered, particularly in the last month of 2018, no? December 2018. Sobrang nipis, no? Kaya nag-sideways movement lang siya. I would say kapag ka nasa consolidation, if the stock is in a consolidation phase, I would say that the, the, the traders uh, playing the stock are, are all, or majority of them are in, a, in an eavesdropping mode, meaning to say they're waiting for somebody to make a significant move, significant purchase uh, for that stock. And how would you know if someone has already started uh, making a significant purchase for that stock? I have a tool for that, which is the top 10 players chart. I can I can check whenever I want to which brokers has already started uh, uh, buying the dips by a significant level, and I can also check kung ano yung kanilang buying average at selling average, no? And then it generate ko na yung price volume distribution chart ko. No? That's how that's how I can move ahead uh, of other traders, no? Uh, nakikita ko I, I I devised no gumawa ako ng mga tools kung paano ko mape preempt. Kanina ko pa minemension yung preempt na yan, di ba? Yung 20 SMA ninyo, inagahan ko yung sa akin, ginawa kong 10 SMA. No? And then, I also have the price volume distribution chart at saka yung uh, top 10 players chart. No? For me to anticipate, mas mauuna ako, no? ng, mas ma para mas mauuna ako sa pag-create pag ng bearish or bullish sentiment no? uh, in relation to sa ano yung nangyayari at this very moment. No? So, nakikita ko kung meron na bang nagbubullish na uh, broker no sa stock na to o baka naman bullish siya kasi baka naman ano lang yun cross trade lang yun no so yun so that's how i know kung kasi once the once i once i saw once i saw dun sa top 10 players chart ko that's, that that a certain broker is significantly ma making some significant uh, buy in sa stock na yun then i would consider uh, buying in tranches siguro magte-test buy na ako dun sa stock na yun Again, test buy, hindi all in, no? Inuulit-ulit ko lang to para lang doon sa mga hindi nakapansin. Doon sa advice ko na never go all in on any stock. Regard, irregardless kung gaano man kayo ka-bullish for that particular stock. No? So, let's mention as well the the support levels and resistance levels ni ISM. No? What you wish is that sana hindi mag-breakdown ito below 5.19. Otherwise, you might pick it up at 3.65 at wag naman sana all the way to 2.34 but if it breaks above the 6.29 para sa hindi naman talaga major resistance level sa so 6.29 is just a midway midway resistance level ang resistance mo talaga is nasa 8.46 uh, pero mahaba haba ano maha, ma, uh, medyo mahaba habang laban ang kakakaharapin ni ISM to go yung 8.46 Especially, manipis ang volume, anemic ang sentiment ng not net net ng mga foreign investors, no? yung dalawang, dalawang yun. No? Kapag tumaas na ang volume in favor of the bullish price movement, no? kapag nas, at yung, green, yung mga green price points na ito na supportahan ng volume, na mas, sana mas matataas ang height ng mga bars na yan, volume bars, compared sa mga nung December. At kung sumabay naman ang foreign investors, then that's a good sign for you to test by CISM. Again, use a trailing stop loss. Okay? Okay, now let's move on to the last but not the least uh, not, last but not the least uh, stock. P-Gold. Pure Gold. No? Ito yung top 5 na most requested stock last, last night. Now, let's talk about Pure Gold. Pure Gold. Okay? Uh, the major support level is pegged at 40, 40 pesos. If you would like to, it's 40.20. No? And then, um, just a few, just uh, two days ago, no? this week, no? bueno mano niya, it broke above the uh, resistance level and as a 43.95 or maybe 44. No? 43.95. And then now it's moving towards the um, next resistance level, which is pegged at 48.90. 48 and as we can all see on this chart, no, it's it it already crossed the halfway, no, yung mean, 
yung gitna, no? Gitna ng 43.95 and 48.90. Uh, some of you are fond of using the uh, Bollinger Bonds, no? Pwede nyo rin gamitin yun, no? Uh, hindi ko nalang pinag pinagdadagdag yung mga indicators na yun, at oscillators na yun dito para hindi masyadong maraming drawing ang chart. No? Um, actually, kung ako lang, enough na sa akin yung top 10 players saka price volume distribution saka yung chart na to. Wala na itong stochastic, eh, wala na yung MACD RSI kung ako lang ang mag-decide. But, uh, for the benefit of the, ano, mga nasanay dun sa mga classical tools na ginagamit, no? of course, only the Equalist Analytics subscribers ang may access dun sa, ano, pwedeng makapag-request ng mga charts ko. I would have to present to you these classical tools na ginagamit ng madlang people. Okay. Now, those are the support and resistance levels ni Pure Gold. Now, let's mention yung volume naman. No? Itong ascent ba niyang ito? It's a towering price uh, uh, chart. No? Well, it's supported by volume naman, in fairness. Ayan, no? Mataas yung price chart, mataas din yung volume bar na na-register. No? So, itong recent na bar na nakikita natin ngayon, it's uh, for today's trading. Ano? For today's trading. Uh, what you wish here, sana is itong volume bar niya, mas taasan niya. O at least, mas lumampas man siya sa gitna noong volume bar kahapon. And, para mas maging sustainable yung bullish sentiment, no? para kay Pure Gold. On the other hand, you will, you will you will want to consider yung stance din ng mga foreign investors, no? Nag-start sila noong last trading days of November 2018. Nag-start na silang mag si pag-realize o magsipagbenta ng kanilang mga shares kay Pure Gold. No? If you're into long-term investing, I would suggest tignan nyo yung mga companies na naka-net foreign buying mode ang mga foreign investors. No? Dito kay Pure Gold, although minention ko itong mga bars na to, no, puro net foreign selling or halos net foreign selling magmula nung last trading days of November 2018, huwag nyo lang titignan dun sa short term, ano, short term chart. Zoom out nyo rin yung stock. No? Tingnan nyo, yung buong taon. No? Sa buong taon, tingnan nyo, measure nyo, naka-net foreign buying mode ba sila o naka-net foreign selling mode ba sila noong buong 2018. No? When it comes to uh, making a decision pagdating sa long-term investment portfolio ninyo, don't make a decision based on the short-term happenings, na short-term short -term events. Yan nyo, expand nyo yung chart nyo. Go as far as 5 years or 10 years if you would like to. Kasi kung magde-decide ka lang na, ay, Bebenta ko na si Pure Gold ko. Nagsimula ng magsipag-registera ng mahahabang south pointed sa southward direction yung mga foreign investors, no? Eh hindi mo pala measure yung buong taon. Hindi mo alam net foreign buying pa, pa pala sila sa buong 2018 or at least for the past 3 to 5 years, no? That's how you should check your data, no? Kapag uh, long-term investment ang pinag-uusapan, no? Yung short-term trading yan, then Pwede ka magpa magpa-influensya doon sa magpa-influence. Pwede mong ipa-influence yung decision mo based on the short term, based on the most recent, no? Recent lang na events. Ayan. I hope I, I was able to make that clear. No? Now, for your MACD, as the price continues to move above the 10-day simple, 10 simple moving average, um, you would be delighted to know that its MACD is also moving above the 10, above the signal line. No? Above the signal line and above the zero line. On the other hand, uh, Pure Gold's RSI is already moving inside the overbought territory. But just like what I've mentioned in the previous chart discussions, huwag kayong magpapadala sa classical interpretation ng RSI or stochastic. No? Use your no, hindi naman, hindi, ano, use your trailing stop loss. No? Use your trailing stop loss as your barometer kung magbebenta ka na ba o hindi. Bakit trailing stop loss ulit? Dagdagan ko lang explanation ko nung sa mga nakaraang four chart discussions. No? Bakit trailing stop loss? Aside sa itlong piece na minention ko, kasi ang trailing stop loss mo, nakabase siya doon sa risk tolerance percentage mo. No? Kung 5% lang ang risk na kaya mong i-handle, no? yun din ang magiging basihan mo sa pag-compute mo ng trailing stop loss. No? It, it respects the amount of risk that you can only handle. Kaya trailing stop loss ang, ang sinasabi kung gamitin yung selling uh, measurement nyo kung kailan kayo magbebenta. Kung kailan bibili, no, 
yun yung klase ng data na binibigay ko sa mga subscribers, Equilist Analytics, sa Equipix na service. No? May na-mention ko doon yung top, top 5 prices with the biggest volume. Tapos, meron pang top 5 prices with the highest number of trades. Kasi hindi po pwedeng tumambay ka lang, pumosisyon pa lang doon sa may pinakamalalaking volume. Eh. No? Bakit naman? Pwede kasi magkaroon ng malaking volume ang isang price point because of cross trades. No? Tingnan mo rin. Malaki bang volume na ito? Baka naman iisa lang ang trade na ito. No? Kumpara doon sa mga katabi niya, na nilampasan niya in terms of height ng volume, pero nasa hundreds naman yung trades nila siya. One trade lang. No? So, tingnan mo rin yung bilang ng trades. Tapos, minimension ko rin yung vol VWAP, Volume Weighted Average Price Point. No? Tapos, minimension ko rin kung ano yung buying selling average ng top 10 players, tsaka yung uh, selling average ng, ng top 10 players. So, limang columns yun. Those are candidates na pwedeng uh, pagbasihan ng mga clients ng Equalist Analytics kung saan sila po position. No? No? Again, this is spoon feeding. You will have to use your coconut. You will have to rationalize. No? Binigay ko na yung mga ano eh. Binigay ko na yung mga data points kung saan ka pwedeng pumosisyon. No? Hindi ko na pwedeng i-click ang left mouse para sa iyo. No? Okay. So, that's the, uh, yun ang klase ng uh, data na wala dito sa free discussion na to. No? Saan ka mismo bibili? No? At saka yung uh, ability to ask follow-up questions. For example, kung may diniscuss akong ganito sa mga clients, merong pri private clients forum they, where they could ask questions. No? With other service providers, pagkasi ng newsletter, wala na, yun na yun. Wala ka na mapagtatanungan. Kung, wala ka na mapagtatanungan yung mga follow-up questions mo. Especially kung technical yan. But with Equalist Analytics, kada binaba tong information, you can post a, a, a thread doon sa private clients forum and then ako mismo ang sasagot or, my, or some of my mem uh, team members ang sasagot doon. No? So you can also request, no? and for any stock, you can request for uh, the top 10 players and price volume distribution chart of any stock. And then we're going to interpret it for you. May nakaabang, may nakaantabay sa private clients forum for, for questions na sinasubmit. Yun. So I hope you were, you were able to uh, learn something. You were able to learn something from this uh, chart discussion. So just to wrap it up, we talked about SM, SMC, MBT, ISM, and Kurgold using the, uh, by citing the foreign fund flow by referencing the MACB and then, and then the RSA position of those stocks. And we also talk about, we also uh, mentioned the resistance, support and resistance levels of those stocks vis-a-vis -vis with their position with the uh, simple moving averages that we used. If you have some follow-up questions, don't hesitate to comment on this video. Uh, please share this video so that many, many traders would also learn, particularly those uh, who are just uh, relatively new either to trading or investing in the Philippine stock market. If you would like to subscribe no, to, the Equi, uh, to the Equipix service of Equilist Analytics, I would recommend that you visit, let's uh, check, I would recommend that you visit equilist.com and then on this page, on this page, just go 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 over to the services menu and then click on Equipix. And then on the Equipix page, uh, you will see the subscription fees. You are going to save a lot if you would subscribe for one year. And by the way, I would recommend uh, mag one year kayo. Not because it's yun ang pinakamas mataas ang subscription fee, not because it will benefit the company even more financially speaking, but because may sariling framework ang Equalist Analytics. No? So, kailangan yung aralin. Kailangan yung aralin. Hindi siya yung pagka nag-subscribe ka, yung mga tools na ginagamit din ng mga ibang analyst ay siya rin tools na gagamitin. Hindi. May sariling, may sariling universe, so to say, ang Equalist Analytics. So, kailangan, medyo tagal-tagalin nyo yung stay nyo dito para ma-adapt ninyo, ma-absorb ninyo ano yung framework na ginagamit dito. No? Again, may sarili tayong framework, hindi para masabing, na, para lang naiba, para lang masabing iba, tools nila dyan. No, not, that's not the point. We would like to make things better. No? And that's why we use the hashtag, we are better. Eh. No? Now, for the subscription steps, 
Yan lang. You will have to fill this out initially. Fill out nyo to and then check your inbox or spam folder. Kasi pinadalhan kayo ng system ng email to complete your registration. So, kasi initially, hihingan lang kayo ng first name, last name, tsaka email address. Of course, you will have to nominate your username and password, tsaka yung other information na kailangan. So, pag fill out nyo to, check nyo agad ng inbox, tsaka spam folder, baka naligaw doon. Click nyo yung link na yun and then kumpletuhin nyo yung registration. Kapag nakompleto yung registration ninyo, no, ma-access na ninyo ngayon yung inyong account. Doon sa account ninyo, ito, itong member login na to, may makikita kayong uh, may makikita kayong pay or renew subscription na, bot, na button. No? Kulay yellow. So, click on that link. Okay, I'm going to show that to you. Ito, pay or renew subscription. No? Click nyo lang yan para makita ninyo yung mga payment options na meron sa inyo. Again, for the Equifix subscription, for the Equifix subscription, you will get access to our short-term er, stock recommendations for short-term trading, long-term investing, and then may mentoring. Ito yung, ito yung forum. No? Ito yung forum kung saan pwede kayong mag magtanong. And then newsletters, no? yung mga clarifications. No? May quick start guide tayo whereby in-explain ko dito in textual manner lahat ng Paano gamitin yung mga tools, yung proprietary tools? Paano ba i-interpret? No? Paano ko ba magagamit yun kung gusto kong bumili? No? So, naka-explain lahat sa quick start kay naka-document dyan. And this coming year, like what I promised to our subscribers, I'm going to add another tab here for video tuto tutorials. No? Video tutorials para mas mabilis yung pa pag marinate sa kanila in terms of our framework at yung discipline yung discipline ng uh, na itinuturo ko for the Equifix subscribers. So, if you have questions, don't hesitate to um, contact us via Facebook, sa email, or just simply go to our website and click on contact us. Yeah. Okay, again, this is JC De Guzman of Equilist Analytics. I hope I was able to impart uh, a new knowledge, new knowledge to you. Thank you guys, and uh, have a good day.